I hope you all are having a wonderful week. My name is Yupari, and I'd like to invite you into my studio today to guide you along the development of this oil painting study of a hand. I'm going to start off by introducing the colors that I'll be using for this painting demonstration. So I'm using zinc white, cadmium red, yellow ochre, and ivory black. And this is the Zorn palette, the Zorn limited palette. I really enjoy using this palette and I've been kind of using it uh, a little bit more recently. So let's start off with the big shape. So I'm going to use a, uh, a size 4 synthetic brush and we're going to handle this demonstration of a hand uh, using a more of a mass oriented approach. So I just dipped my brush into a, a mixture of one part stand oil to four parts mineral spirits. So imagine that's like one teaspoon of stand oil and four teaspoons of mineral spirits if you want to look at it that way. So I'm going to use ivory black, a little bit of cadmium red, and a tad bit more ivory black. Just those two for now. And just a little touch of the white. A little more touch of the white. I don't want to have straight black, but I want something that's fairly dark. So I'm going to use a mass oriented approach. So what does that mean? So that means I'm going to focus on big shapes and big simplistic shapes. So let's see. I have just basically three marks here indicating to me where I want the hand to be placed. So let's say I want the hand to be here. So the wrist will be here and then the bottom of the fingers will be there. So what do I mean when I say mass? So this is what I mean. I'm using just straight lines and angles in such a way to block in the entire hand with just a few simple lines. So now that I have just a simple mass for where I want the hand to fit, I'm going to go ahead and cover the surrounding areas with this tone. And this mass oriented approach is uh, more practical in my opinion uh, when you're trying to work with things such as hands. If you want to work with hands or feet, anything like that, uh, where you're working a big portrait painting or a figure painting and uh, then you're like, oh my goodness, now what am I going to do with the hands and the feet? Well, you work with big shapes just like this and you mass in the big picture and then when you get to the smaller bits of information, such as a hand, you're going to want to approach it in such a way that you're not taking forever to get a little simplified outline or like an overly complicated line. No, you want to focus on just big masses, just big shapes. So let's get into a little bit of the flesh tone now. So I'm going to switch to a different brush and I'm going to dilute it with the mineral spirits and stand oil combination that I was talking about earlier. So I'm going to be using cadmium red and yellow ochre. Just those two, and then I'm going to use the white. Now this mixture on its own is too saturated, so I'm going to bring down the saturation with the ivory black. And I want to create a tone that is a little bit, a little bit darker and a little bit warmer than I would want to go ultimately with the flesh tones. And the reason that I'm going to do this is so that I can utilize this color and this color to facilitate the drawing. And this is going to be very similar uh, to the way that I approach portrait painting, if you've seen my portrait painting videos. So just a little more of the white into this mixture, and let's see how this mixture looks. And it's, it's fairly good. It might be too light, so I'm going to go ahead and a little more cadmium red, and then the ivory black, just to bring that value down a little bit. 
don't want it to be too strong. So this, something like this will do. So let's start to draw with this color now. So I'm going to go ahead and just mass in this area so we have a straight line here. And let's just think of it as shapes. Let's forget the fact that we're painting a hand for a second. And let's just look at it in terms of shapes. So here's a little shape that comes down like this. And it's okay if a little bit of the background color mixes into the flesh tone mixture. That is all right. So here we have a little shape over here. This curves over here. So now with the knuckles, there's going to be a little axis right here. So I'm going to make that gesture of an axis of the knuckles uh, with this singular brush stroke. And in fact, I'm going to put a little bit more warmth into it. So I'm going to let the cadmium red mix with a little bit of this background color, and we're going to put a nice little plane here. But in reality, this is just indicating the axis of the knuckles for me. Now I'm going to go ahead and further delineate these shapes here. So we have a little corner here for the thumb, so it sticks out like that. So it pokes out here and cuts right back in like this. Very simple and very abstract. So this cuts in like that. The corner of the knuckle. This shape is a little, a little wider down here. And so now the finger cuts across like this. See that? That finger is actually maybe a bit more coming out like that. And again, it's all right that the background color is getting into uh, the flesh tones because this is something I usually call a false color when I'm doing a portrait painting. This is just to lay down a ground that I can work on top of and create uh, closer and closer flesh tone mixtures, but it's also going to help me to draw. So let's see if this angle is correct. So standing back, I see that this angle might come out a little further, something like this, and the finger cuts in in this fashion. And so we have the knuckles coming down here. So let's just fill that in. And now there's going to be a little darker plane down there, so let's just mix these two and maybe put a little more ivory black with some of the yellow ochre. So yellow ochre and ivory black together make a cooler color, very much like a greenish tone. So I'm going to go ahead and place that in there now. So I'm actually going to let some of the background uh, have some influence into this color. And I'm going to do the same thing over here just to get a tone. Again, we're working with big masses. I just want to get a tone. Now I'm going to switch back to the background brush, and I'm going to further delineate this little shape now. This cuts in like that, and this kind of goes up like this. So we have the ivory black, again, with the cadmium red, yellow ochre, and I really just want something that's dark and in the right value for now. Let's see, this cuts in like this, so we have a straight line, so we have a straight line coming up here, so we have one, two, three, all the way around, four. And it doesn't have to be set in a stone, it's just something to uh, help me facilitate the drawing, just working in straight lines and angles. So the first uh, bit of information that I'm going to want to lock down in the hand is going to be this little accent for the finger that's sticking out. So I'm going to put a little accent mark right there. And that's just going to help me uh, indicate where I think that this finger is going to be turning. I'm going to use a large synthetic brush just to help me cut back on the glare so that it's easier to assess the values. Now I see that I may have a little more distance that I can add over here on the wrist. So I really try to think about uh, the wrist bone. So this little uh, mark right here. So I really try to think about the distance from the wrist bone to the axis, the axes of the knuckles. So this distance from here to here is kind of like a proportion 
Uh, if you think about, say, on a portrait, this distance could be like the uh, the hairline to, say, the nose, the axis of the nose, and then the axis of the mouth goes somewhat down here, and then we have the chin over there. So that's kind of an analogy that I tried to have in my head. Now I'm going to switch to some smaller brushes just to further facilitate the drawing. So let's go ahead and use a size one round brush. It's a synthetic brush. So let's go ahead and further delineate this shape. So this cuts in like this. Remember, it's all about the shapes. Cuts in like that. See, we have one and then two and then up to the side of the hand, three. Four. And now again, I'm only using the background color to help me with this shape. So this cuts in here like that one, and then two. And in fact, this might cut in a little higher up, a little bit closer to being flat like that. And now there's a little shape here, and it's a little more straight. And this cuts in like this, and this cuts in like that. Very simple, just thinking about these shapes in relation to one another. So now I'm going to go and look at this shape now. I'm going to be looking at the bottom of the f this shape here for the finger using a vertical gesture. I see that it probably maybe cuts down a little bit here, so somewhere over here. We have a, a delineation of one finger meeting the other finger. So I'm still kind of working with the outside shape. So I'm going to go from the outside shape into the smaller shapes. So let's see, this cuts in like this. And then it cuts in, let's see, a little more up here where we have the delineation of the other finger, so let's make a little shape for that. And this cuts down, then this goes up as we approach the pinky, so this cuts up here. And I, again, I'm working with the oil paint to allow me to facilitate the drawing. So I'm very much thinking about the shapes just as I would if I were drawing this hand, say with a uh, graphite pencil, uh, very carefully trying to get these shapes to work. So now we have a little shape here for the pinky. It's also helpful to think of the negative shapes. So this is almost like a very skinny triangle with the tip of the triangle here and here's the bottom. And now we have the knuckles. So this cuts in here. So let's look at the the knuckles now. So I'm going to add a little bit more cadmium red to this drawing mixture. Using the same brush now, I'm going to try and indicate where the fingers are meeting. So again, here's the axis of the knuckles right here. Little axis right there. So let's see. This knuckle, the corner of this knuckle kind of matches horizontally with the side of the thumb. So I can use that little optical trick. See how this matches horizontally with this. So now I'm going to cut in right here to make one simple shape. I'm going to use the fan brush to eliminate some of the glare. And I'm just trying to figure out the simple shape for each finger. Now don't think about it as, uh, say, trying to count the fingers. It's not, a, it's not a good idea to say, oh, oh no, do I have seven or 19 fingers or something like that. It's important to see the entire unit of the fingers as one mass. So here's the, uh, this finger is actually going up, whereas these fingers are going down. So let's look at a little center line for the fingers. So a center line following these areas of the fingers. So this one is protruding up. 
whereas these are going further down. See that? These are going further down. And this one is pretty much flat. So it's kind of like an axis mark for this area. And now we have the delineation of these two fingers following a little bit lower in relation to this one. See, this brush stroke is just a little bit lower than that brush stroke. That's all it is. And now this one is very close to being uh, to matching up to this brush stroke on a vertical. It could be just a little bit lower. So this could be just a little bit lower than that, but they are so close to matching up. So here we have one knuckle and another and the other. Now that we have the outside shape, let's get into some of the planes for the hands. So I'm going to be switching to another brush now, and this is going to be sort of like a half tone brush. So with the Zorn palette, you'll notice that I tend to mix right on top of existing puddles of color. Uh, and at the same time, I try to kind of uh, adjust the values accordingly. So this value is kind of, kind of halfway in between this lighter area and this darker area. So let's mix this color, and then I'm going to switch to a different brush. And this one is going to be my light, light brush. So I'm going to just mix the yellow ochre and the cadmium red together. And then with the white, I'm going to create a very vibrant pink. So this pink is going to be kind of essential for the the knuckles. We want to, we want some warmth in this area of the hands. So I'm going to push the warmth in these areas here. So we have one there. So we have one, two, three. And actually the tone of the uh, panel is actually helping me out with these colors. And so the tone on this panel is actually uh, residue from an oil painting. So what happened was I had a uh, palette. So I had my color palette and I was done painting. And with my palette knife, I combined all the colors together and then painted over an old painting. And so that's what gave me this tone. But this tone is actually kind of helping me with the flesh tones. It's kind of showing through. In any case, so I want the pinks to show in this area. So that is a very important color change that I want to note very quickly. Now switching back to those half tones that I was talking about. So with this brush now, I'm going to squint to try and see the most emphatic darks, the most important darks, and they seem to be somewhat down here uh, because the light is hitting up here. So the light, I imagine, the light source is somewhere up here, and then as the knuckles curve further away from the light, they get darker. See how this is a little bit lighter than this, and then it gets even darker, say, over here? So I'm going to switch uh, to, say, this area of the palette. So I'm going to use the paint that was already on there to mix a different value. So this value I'm going to put over here, and it's fairly dark fairly dark. So let's make it even darker and warmer. So a little bit more of the cadmium red mixed onto this color that was already on here. And kind of a single brush stroke will do for this kind of thing. And so again, I'm going to follow this little axis that I had for the knuckles here. And this area is getting darker as well. Single brush stroke time. Or let's make it seem like it's a single brush stroke. Very simply, just like that. I want the fingers to look like they're turning away from the light. And now this one is getting a little bit darker, but not as dark as this one. And I do have a little bit of the background color getting into this knuckle, but that's all right. It's actually helping with the value. So now this value, it seems to be okay for now. Now I'm going to switch back to the brush that I used for the uh, first little color mass. 
So I'm going to mix on the side here a more yellowish note. So mixing right here with on top of what was already existing. So we have just yellow ochre and the white mixing it together and allowing it to intertwine with these colors that were already on the palette. Now I'm going to pick and choose an area here. So let's say that right there. So there's a plane here that is receiving more light. So I'm very strategically placing this light right here. So the game here, so to speak, is to do the most we can with the least that we can. So this brush stroke here alongside this mass that we created is already going to start to create uh, somewhat of the form. Do you see that? Now it's starting to create form just by adding this plane here that's receiving the light. So now I'm going to add a little bit more yellow ochre and a tad bit more ivory black but just a tiny amount of ivory black and back to the the white so now I'm going to mix up the same kind of color but I just want it to be a little bit cooler so a little more ivory black tad bit more ivory black so I'm basically going to mix on the same puddle here and now I'm going to use this to place a few little glimpses of light. So there's a glimpse of light there, glimpse of light here, and another little glimpse of light here. And it's a very cool note, note referring to the color. So those are just some little glimpses of light on the knuckles and the side of the finger. So let's try to get rid of the glare. So this will get rid of some of the glare. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more of this pink to this mixture. So just a little bit more of this pink to this mixture that we already had. And the Zorn palette is very useful in this way when we mix colors on top of pre-existing colors. It also helps cut back on the chroma. So there's a plane right here. So this whole area is catching a good amount of light. It's catching a fair amount of light. And it's even more pink, so let's just take even more of that pink now and put in this plane here. Do you see that? This plane is catching the light. It's receiving the light a little bit more and I'm purposefully letting some of the uh, original color that we placed on here exist here to give me somewhat of a turning value, meaning that this value here is getting is darker and I'm leaving it alone so that it creates the illusion of the light wrapping around the forms. So let's leave some of this dark here. I'm going to leave that alone. And now I'm going to place more light around here. So I'm strategically using the uh, initial color that I placed there. So now there's a little bit more light here. And a little more light here. Using the same color essentially. And now this note is getting a little too, too strong. So let's just go on this area of the palette. So this is a little too light in relation to the surrounding colors. So let's bring it down. Let's just take some of this. Why not? It's just a little darker to adjust that value. And now let's go back into this with the pink, adding a little bit more of the white now. So the plane on the side of the pinky, the pinky plane, if you will, is, I think, receiving more light. So therefore, this plane here is actually facing the light a little bit more. So let's do that. See this plane here? So this part of the hand is actually receiving more light. And over here, let's switch to a different brush. 
So over here, it's getting a little bit darker. So let's switch, switch brushes back to the, the one with the blue tape. And like I said, I want this one to be the halftone brush. So I'm going to be using the dark lights to help me create some of the turning planes. So a turning plane is a little dark accent like this right here that exists just before the light reaches the shadow. See that? Just before the light reaches the shadow. And it can be just a simple little brush stroke to create that illusion of form. I'm going to eliminate the glare. So if you want to know exactly what brushes that I'm using and what panel that I'm using and what oil paints I'm using, of course, that's all going to be typed in the description below. But this one, I'll tell you, it's Master's Touch 2-inch Fine Flat. Just a cheap synthetic brush. So it's helping me eliminate the glare. Now this knuckle actually needs to come down a little bit further. So let's use a little bit of the uh, warmer notes that we had before. So let's add a little bit more warmth here. With the cadmium red, it should help to add a little more warmth. And I'm deliberately letting this brush color, the color on this brush touch the uh, color that was down here to create that little value that uh, kind of like a plane so we have one two and three with the planes and then the same thing over here and I'm going to I'm gonna notice uh, I'm gonna use a horizontal line here with my brush and I think that this finger might be a little bit lower actually so with the same color let's make a single brush stroke to move that a little bit further down and then while we have a little more paint on here let's just add in this light here but it's not as light as this area so I'm gonna make that a little darker switching to the other brush so let's make that a little darker So I'm moving back and forth between these two brushes and uh, this one did start out as the light light brush but now it's starting to be more of like the uh, the half tone brush. So I'm going to add just a little bit more warmth now to the knuckle and again the idea is for me to keep a value a value area like the light light brush uh, for this brush but oftentimes uh, they get kind of mixed up and that's all right so let's add a little bit more pink to this area that's the little touch and then the same thing here I'm gonna adjust this shape so let's use the light light brush let's try and make the light light brush uh, have a lighter value so I've just basically picked off a lighter color from the palette and let's just adjust this shape just add a little more refinement to the shape now I'm gonna switch to uh, those darker and warmer notes and add just a little more warmth over here see how it's starting to make it the turn of the pinky and then just a little glimpse of light down here. Just a little touch of light. Don't need much. And now with this brush with the same uh, dark and warm value, I'm going to start to add the dark lights for the side of the knuckles. And this can very strategically be a single brush stroke or at least look like a brush stroke, single brush stroke. So see that accent there? And another accent right here. Let's use some of the paint that was 
left here from that drawing, that drawing color that we used. And then over here as well. See how we can quickly create the form with just a few values. Now with the background color, I'm just going to correct or say further uh, define the outside shape of the fingers now. So this isn't a square slab, it's a little more round. So let's try to make curves using straight lines and angles. Just like an architect would build a bridge, they would probably use straight lines and angles in their architectural drawing. So let's just use straight lines and angles here to create the curves. So let's see this one here. So we have just a slab right now. It looks like a slab. So with just a few little lines, so let's see, one, two, three, four. Four little straight lines and angles, and now we have the curve of the finger. And let's just add a few little touches of light into this darker mass. So I'm just going to use what was on the palette for, say, uh, this mixture here. Few little touches of light. See that? Just single brush strokes. Just a few touches of light. And I'm going to leave this pinky alone and just leave these two touches of light. So now let's add some of the uh, indications of the veins. And so I'm going to mix yellow ochre with ivory black, just a touch of ivory black and a fair amount of yellow ochre. And uh, this is going to give me a green, a little bit more ivory black. So that's the nice thing about the uh, Zorn palette. So that's this palette right here. Uh, this limited four color palette can really create a lot of nice flesh tones. And I really, I really like using it. I've been using it a fair amount recently. So here we have a nice little green. And it's not an overly saturated green, which is kind of nice. So let's draw in some little glimpses of the veins. So veins are something that are a lot of fun to paint, but we don't want to overdo it. So let's see what this value looks like. I may need to get a touch darker, so let's use a little more ivory black. Just a little more ivory black. And maybe not as green as this. So let's just a tiny bit of this color, tiny bit, into the mixture. So now let's see what this value looks like. Now it's too dark, so I'm going to lighten it up with the yellow ochre. I'm going to take some of the paint off the brush, just using the palette here. See that takes some paint off, but let's see. Now this is closer to what I wanted. So now let's use this mixture. So this vein comes up here, follows this little bone here, the phalanges bones for the fingers. So that's where that vein is traveling. And then another vein here is wrapping around. Let's use a little more of this color actually. So it's actually coming in a little bit more this way. And I'm applying the brush strokes in this kind of direction horizontally, just so I don't have too much glare. I'll show you what I mean. So if I go like this, how I want to, in this kind of direction, notice how it's creating a glare. But that's that's okay. I can just go back over it with the fan brush later. So let's see. The vein makes just a little shape like that. Now I'm going to go over it with the fan brush. And there's even little tiny glimpses of veins down here. Veins are something you got to be careful with. You don't want to overdo it. Don't want to make it too green either. So that's something that's nice about the Zorn palette is it kind of prevents you from doing something like that because this is the deepest green that I can possibly obtain with the Zorn palette, just using 
the yellow ochre and the ivory black. So I'm going to use a little bit more of this flesh tone mixture to add some little glimpses of the vein, little dots here, little dot here. Not much, just little glimpses of stuff over here. Add some noise, just scumble in some noise. Now switching to my light brush, I'm just going to take some of the color from the palette and only the areas that are showing the most light on the veins are going to be used. So this one is definitely going to be used. See this little light here? That's definitely going to be part of the painting. And I don't want to uniform in a uniform fashion place light onto the veins rather i just want little glimpses of light and strategically placed areas so one there then one here don't want to overdo it veins are something that are easily over overly painted so a little more light actually over here And maybe a touch there. I'm going to use the fan brush to eliminate some of this glare very lightly. And you want to make sure you have a clean brush when you do this. And there's just a tad bit of glare gleaming out over here. So let's get rid of some of that too. Now one of the last things I'll do is go ahead and restate this dark underneath the hands. So remember before I didn't want to use straight up black? I still don't, but I'm going to be making it a little bit darker. So let's just use some of the paint that was already on there to help us make sure that we're not using straight black. So little more okay so let's use this mixture I'm going to dilute it a little bit so I just dipped the brush into the stand oil and mineral spirits mixture that I talked about before just to dilute it and make it a little I'll make it flow a little bit more just a little more fluidity to the paint so let's add that dark and in doing this we're also going to sharpen some of the edges sharp edge there and less pressure here in a kind of a padding fashion will make a softer edge. And on this finger, a little sharper. See that? It's a little more pressure made it a little more sharp. And actually this shape I can correct a little bit comes in like that. And now I'm going to apply this dark value over here, but very lightly. I don't want any of these edges to get any sharper than they already are. And it's okay if you uh, mess up like I did there and I took a little chunk of the finger off. It's all right. We can place that right back in there. So just get the flesh tone mixture that you had before and almost like nothing happened. Not a problem. So I'm going to go back in and uh, add a little more dark over here and sharpen that edge. So I'm pulling focus, if you notice, right here and here, and letting this get a little bit softer because it's going away from us. So a little darker over here. So let's spread this tone now. Spread the tone, so just like this, spreading this dark. Kind of framing the hand as well. So this, the sleeve actually makes a sharper shape there. And let's just soften all of this. And this shape actually cuts in a little 
higher up over here. So that's just a final little adjustment there. And I'm going to soften this a little bit with a clean brush. And this edge, I actually kind of like the way it is. And that concludes this painting demonstration of a hand. Thank you so much for watching. And of course, if you want to know exactly which materials I use, all of that information will be typed in the description box below. So just scroll down to the bottom of this video if you're curious as to what oil paints I used and what panel I used. All of that information will be typed in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I wish you the best in all of your artwork, and I'll see you on the next video.